Man, these, I can't believe this. This is amazing how gorgeous they are. What is going on, y'all? Jason over here at Kyle Kill Farm. Well, today is extremely nasty outside. Woo! <laughs> it's a nasty one today, y'all. It is a nasty one today. Oh, gosh, it's nasty. It has rained all day long until now. We got us a break. Uh, I think the rain may be gone for the day. It's a mess outside. It is a mess. But I think it's a great day to go harvest some veggies out of the garden. I'm gonna grab my clippers and I'm gonna grab me a harvest basket here and I'm gonna put on my Shona frame boots cause it is a mess outside y'all. Whew. Hoping to harvest a good bit of greens today. And then when I get finished with harvesting the greens, uh, I'm gonna bring them inside, show you guys how we clean and prepare and cook greens, collard greens, turnip greens. And I actually can't wait to show you guys what the garden looks like, cause it's crazy. And I wanna check my carrots today and see if we see any signs of carrots germinating. I also, also want to tell you guys about some more garden planning that I got going on too. All right, let's go see what we can get into in this garden. I do want to show you guys that the driveway is official. Uh, it is. Matter of fact, Mr. Griggs here right now cutting me a path to the creek and the uh, spring over yonder behind our property so we can actually drive the side by side down there to the creek and uh start working on getting that ram pump installed but look y'all how awesome is that right we got some rain you see the pond still holding water which is great uh no issues no washing no nothing with the driveway it all looks absolutely amazing as you guys can tell look at this don't it look awesome? Now, of course, we're gonna plant grass seed all up in here, and we're gonna plant some trees all up through here. And we're gonna put grass seed all down the sides too. All that, because we planted, if y'all don't remember, me and Brooke planted grass seed all through there, and you can see how well it did. This is all new. Mr. Greg cut all this, cut this hill down so we can cut it with the bush hog and lawnmower. <clears throat> this right here, actually was flat and this is where the tiny house was right in here now look guys look at that don't that look way different and better the driveway comes around because before y'all if y'all don't remember we was just driving straight this way down that big hill now look no big hills it's all gradual and just imagine this with some trees planted in it oh it's gonna be beautiful and of course our grass seed gonna be beautiful so that is one major thing there that is out of the way and who i'm trying to think off the top of my head you know we still got little things here and there on the house that we're still doing nothing really worth oh showing you guys we're still waiting on our cabinet doors and um of course we gotta get a handrail built so look at this y'all look at this garden is this not just beautiful this is the best winter garden fall garden i've ever grown you guys all remember how beautiful the gardens were at little cog our original farm and i had super successful gardens there but y'all number one i've never picked greens this early before and that soil over there was beautiful tons of compost perfect to me i never picked greens this early i just i just do not remember picking greens this early y'all i may go back and double check and i may be i may be i may be off on that but i don't think i am i do not remember harvesting my garden this early and plus i got a late start i know my carrots and garlic are way behind onions too but that's okay that's okay because listen listen i want you guys to know this 
you know, we're in zone 8A. I'm in central Alabama. So we can still plant stuff right now. I can plant greens. Uh, kale could be planted right now for us. Carrots can still be planted right now for us. Garlic bulbs can be planted right now for us. You could, you could still do kohlrabi. Gosh, you can still, we can still do a lot of stuff right now. Lettuces, which I got a flat of lettuces in there that aren't quite ready to be put outside. They're still teeny tiny, but there's so much that we can still plant and we'll continue to plant throughout the entire growing season. Let's go look at the carrots real quick. All right, so here is our carrots right here. And I'm seeing, you see that little thing right there? That little bit right there. I'm thinking that may be carrots right there. Man, carrots are getting them up. Once they get up, you're good. But getting them up is the thing with carrots. But that could be carrots. That looks like a carrot seed right there. Yeah, that's carrots. Let me show you the difference. You see that long, skinny leaf? That's carrots. Now this right here, that's a weed. Right here, that's a long, skinny leaf. I'm pretty sure that's a carrot. Right there, so our carrots are starting to poke their heads up. Some of them. We've kept it moist. That's a carrot. That's a good sign. That is a good, good sign. Now we had some pretty hot weather. Unusually hot weather in the mid 80s. A couple days after I sowed that carrot seed, or me and Brooke sowed the carrot seed, and that may have delayed us because carrots don't like anything above 80 degrees pretty much. So hopefully we'll continue to watch that and hopefully we'll have some carrots coming on up soon. Look at our rutabagas. Look at here, look at that. Oh my gracious, y'all look at the rutabagas. And we can eat these leaves too, look at that. Look at that green, isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous and look y'all, I have done zero uh, organic spraying on our garden. I've done nothing yet. Nothing. And look here, look at here. I mean, there, look how beautiful that green is. So far, I've had zero pest issues whatsoever. And of course, that's one reason that I love fall and winter garden versus spring and summer. The pest pressure is not nearly as bad. Now, on my turnip greens here, you can see we got a little bit here. In there but um i don't see anything quite yet that's bad enough for me to to, to justify spraying them look at that y'all look at that huge green good gracious whoo anyways i don't see anything that's really really showing me that i need to spray i really don't i mean this little damage here that's livable I mean, there's nothing wrong with that we can also look on the back side of these leaves and see if we see any eggs. And um, I don't see anything at all, y'all. Everything looks beautiful. What's that right there? No, it's nothing. Nothing. A lot of times those insects and pests will love to lay their eggs, especially these greens, on the underneath of your greens to stay protected. And um, we're looking good. That's actually dirt. Don't let that fool you, that is just dirt. And that's why we're going to wash them. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how we wash our greens because it can be a little tricky when washing your greens. Y'all look at the below. We got down to 31. And look at it. It bit all of that back. I had some zinnias that were um, growing up around here. All of that got bit. Now this one has had some insect damage. Y'all see this one? I don't know why. You can see this one's fine, this one's fine. Everything else in the garden is fine. For some reason, this one right here has had some issues. And I may just pull this thing on out, be honest with y'all. I don't know what's going on with that, but I don't want it. I think I see some eggs on the back side of it. We're gonna get that out of the garden. I'm gonna set it there and I'm gonna get it out. Completely out. All right, y'all, let's harvest some greens and let's see. What do we have? Man, this is unreal right here. All right, man, I am. y'all just don't know how excited I am. I am so excited. 
And what you want to do is you're just going to cut that leaf off. See that? You're just going to cut those leaves off. And if you see a leaf you don't like, just cut off and discard it, you know? It's like this one right here. It's got these holes in it. I may set me a little pile over here, and we'll put that in the compost bin. But all this, good gracious, whoo. And I'm going to tell y'all, greens are going to fool you. Always cut more than you think. Because what's going to happen is... these guys are going to cook down to a third of what you put in that pot and we'll show you that now when we cook these greens you're gonna see we do it a little bit different than a lot of people in our area or here in the south or southeast um, ours are pretty healthy the way we do it. Man, these, I can't believe this. This is amazing how gorgeous they are. Gorgeous, I tell y'all. Absolutely gorgeous. When we get on down here, y'all, these plants get really big. I mean, they get huge on down here. I mean, these are some monsters down here. My gracious. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now, a good thing that happened, which may sound crazy, is that we had a pretty good little, well, we got below freezing for a little bit. Got to around 31 and we had a frost this morning. And you can see it didn't affect any of the garden. But what it did is greens, collard greens, turnip greens, uh, kale is another one. When it gets below like that and they get, the frost gets on them, it makes them taste better, less bitter, uh, uh, sweeter in flavor. Y'all, this is the perfect, this is just, man. But it does make it sweeter in flavor. Just a perfect, perfect timing for us to be out here picking these greens. Look at that leaf. Isn't that gorgeous? Wowzers. That's a monster. And two. You know, I could throw in, I could cut some of these rutabaga, green, rutabaga greens and put in here. Uh, I got some collard greens we could put in here. My collard greens are still a little young though, but we could still put them in there. That wouldn't be that big of a deal at all. Uh, the karabi, we could mix all these greens together. If I had kale, you can also mix kale in it. The way we cook it is just, like I said, it's healthy. And you talk about some vitamins and some nutrition now. Rich in iron. Man. Hey, and it won't be nothing for us. You know, for me to come out here in the garden and uh, pick a mess of greens, and we just have uh, cornbread and greens. And these collard greens, or these turnip greens and the collard greens, will just produce like this just about all winter and fall. And kale's the same way. If you're a big kale fan, kale is the same way. Super easy to grow. All right, so I think I got me a, a good enough mess of them right here. Look at that, y'all. Ain't that beautiful? <laughs> Man. And I just want to show you guys. Look at this. So I probably cut, I probably stopped right about in this area right here. So let's just count plants. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Just say 20. Just say 25. We'll round off and say 25. 25 plants, right? And look how much I got left. Just off the 25 plants I just cut. I can I just... A good bit of, a good bit left on those guys 
So if you bought a seed pack and that pack had 50 seeds in it, I think the all top turnips have a good many. I won't say 250, but I can't remember off the top of my head, but let's just say it was 50 seeds in that seed pack for, I'm, I won't even throw a high number out there and just say $5. $5 for 50 seeds. Look at that. Look at that. Now I'm, I'm almost positive it's more in 50 seeds in that pack, but just look. And let's just say it is 250 seeds in that pack. Good gracious, y'all. Look how much food that would produce for your family. That is amazing. Gardening is amazing. It is. It's is absolute amazing. It is a miracle. Just um, that little tiny, that little teeny tiny, tiny seed and produces all of this. Let's go look in the greenhouse real quick. Much warmer in the greenhouse. Don't have a heater in here or nothing. Much warmer in here. All right, so I got some cabbage. I don't know if I talked about this yet or not, but I got some cabbage here that um that my good buddy Greg Key at Hoss Tools he sent me and um of course I'm not a I've never been a grow cabbage well so I'm gonna get this in the ground and hopefully I don't let Mr. Greg down. Mr. Greg at Hoss, not Mr. Greg here at the 40 now that's done all the amazing of uh, land and site work here. This here is a flower that we can grow in the winter called calendula. And look at that, it's all sprouted. Here's some more calendula. I planted some violas. Never, I've never started violas from seed, which are just a pansy. Just think of a pansy. And uh, But I do see them coming up. I do see those guys coming up. Over here, I got arugula, which I love arugula. You guys probably know that. We've talked about it many a time. And another green that we can grow, I got some, this one is called Scyphus Butterhead, which is a lettuce, and Harmony Butterhead. Now the Harmony has been a little bit slower to germinate versus the Scyphus for me now. I see some, they're starting to come up, but um, this seemed like it was a good three to five days faster than the Harmony. So this will be going in the ground soon. And let me tell you guys, what the plans are that's gonna happen pretty quick for the spring and summer garden <laughs> right now in November. I know you're thinking, what in the world? You're spring and summer, it's November? Yeah, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so I, I told you I got calendulas I need to plant. I got some lettuces that I got to plant. I got my arugula, I got the cabbage. So I got all the things that I wanna get in the ground to, uh, to provide us food throughout the fall, winter, and early spring months. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna finish out this garden where the black tarp is right here. We're gonna finish this whole garden out. I'm gonna take the tarp right here and I'm gonna relocate it. I'm gonna get Brooke to help me and then we're gonna take the tarp and then we're gonna tarp this area over here. And then I'm gonna just tarp this as far as the tarps can go all the way out. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna start preparing this area for the spring and summer. So that's my plan right now. So when it, um, when it dries up and warms up a little bit, we're probably gonna hit this with the tiller and get it ready. And then we're gonna tarp it. All this is gonna die down and compost into the ground and start preparing itself for the spring and summer. So come spring and summer, we can pull that tarp back and we can get to planting. Then probably what I'll do is, is when I'm doing that, I'm gonna come over here. I'm not gonna tarp this. Say this is gonna go on, this is just gonna die down. It's gonna get too hot for this garden. And we're gonna be planting in our spring and summer garden over here. This is gonna start to die down. I'm not gonna tarp this yet. We're gonna plant a spring and summer cover crop here to, con to, to, to revitalize that soil to turn into a green manure to help weeds because it's going to smother out any type of weeds and it's going to break insect cycles. That's what cover crops do so well and help with erosion. But we're going to do that. We're going to let this come up. We're going to cut it. We may cut it several times. We'll just watch it and see. And then eventually we'll tarp this 
and then it will do the same thing. It's going to kill that cover crop down underneath it. That cover crop is going to compost back into the soil, and that's how we're just going to keep our soils just super, super, super healthy. Now, one little tip. Let's say that you need to get these picked today, and something happened, or you can pick them today, but you couldn't cook them until a couple of days from now. And this goes for any vegetable you pick out of your garden, this tip. Take them inside, if they need to be refrigerated, if it's something that needs to be refrigerated, like we would put these in the refrigerator. If it was tomatoes, we'd leave them out. But we would not wash them until it's time to eat them. It will just last longer that way. All right, let's go prepare some turnip greens. There you go, the men in black. Probably getting ready to go, go to bed. Those short days. I'd be glad when these short days are over with. And that's gonna be a while, cause we just got started. <laughs> What's up, Mildred? What's up, gang? How's everybody doing? Hey, Paris, Fifi, Capri. Everybody, how y'all doing? By the way, the Rhode Island Reds are doing amazing. They're doing awesome in their new home. If I didn't have a load of greens, I'd go show them to you guys. All right, wait till Brooke sees this big old basket of greens we got today. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I would call it a mess of greens, but it's a basket of greens. <laughs> it is a basket of greens. It's a full basket of greens. It is a, it's a mess of them. That's pretty, pretty good for the first harvest, wouldn't you think? And that's off about 25 plants. Wow. Yeah. So I better get my green touch back on, right? <laughs> that's right. All right, so what do you think we ought to do? You want to... I mean, the stems are getting kind of woody, so you want to just pull some of them off? Yeah, we can. You can do you can do greens two ways. You can rip the stem out, or you can cook the stem in the, um, or you can just cook the stem with the rest of it. And the stem won't be as tender as the greens, but it will be tender. So that's just a preference. To me, and I don't care either way. You want to go and fill the sink up with water, yeah, and we'll start. Uh, that'd be a good idea. So Ripping we're going to wash them three times, right? We're going to wash them three times. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill our sink up full of water. Cool water. Cool water. And then we're going to put the greens in the sink. And then what's going to happen is, is that the dirt's going to go to the bottom and the greens are going to float to the top. And we're just going to swish them around and around. And we'll do that three times. And then we'll look for anything because, I mean, you may have... I mean, these are, these are your greens. You're growing them in your garden. I mean, there may be a, a bug on it. There may be something on it. So if you see it, just get it off. But that's true with every vegetable that's you any grow vegetable. in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> Especially or, if you're going organic, you're not using, you know, heavy pesticides. You know, you're gonna, you just have to, you know, just look at them and see. But these should be really, really clean and easy to go. So let's go ahead and get a pot going. Okay. With some chicken stock is what we're gonna use today. Okay, good. Um, and I'm gonna use, the biggest pot I have. All right. Got a big, heavy Dutch oven here. And I'm just gonna take my stock. There is no set amount that you should try to use, but with this many greens, it's gonna take um, six cups, maybe. Okay. Be a rough estimate. And then if we see that we need to add some more, we always can, but the, the greens themselves contain liquid. Think that's good? Looks good. And I'm just gonna leave this over here in case I need some more and turn my heat up high. And let that get to a good heavy boil while we wash them. All right, so what we're doing is, is we're just swishing them around in the water. And the uh, main thing is to get that grit off of them because we don't want gritty greens at all. It's not fun. All 
All right, so what we do is, is that we just tear ours. We just tear them in pieces that are easy to bite. You know, you don't wanna try to put a big whole leaf in your mouth. And then just take this, if it's a thick stem, take the thick stem out and uh, like that. They're starting to look good now. Mm -hmm. Gonna be some good eating tonight. <laughs> you could use scissors if you wanted to. This is just the way we've always done it. Chop them up. Yeah, you could shred them. You could do anything you wanted to. You could even put them in a in a machine type chopper and you know hit it a couple of times if you wanted them fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Yeah, we're looking good. It's a little too strong one. It was. Now, I know people may ask where we got these <laughs> hot bowls from or whatever you want to call them. Uh, your mom bought them for us just for the greens in. And where'd she get them off of? No idea. Jason. We can. We really don't know. We've had them for a long time. Uh, I will look on Amazon. If I do see them on Amazon, I will put a link in the, the description. It's got a drain in it, just like a sink drain. And you, uh, they can actually fill it with water. Yeah, so you can actually soak them. Yeah. And then drain them and rinse them. These are what you call no grit turnips. No grit turnip greens. No grit turnip greens. All right. Your stock ready? I think it's just about there. Right. You're looking good. Your stock's boiling. And this is all we do is just greens and stock, salt to taste. And that's pretty much it. A lot of people add fat back or ham hocks or bacon or something like that to theirs but we just don't we don't do that to watch, ours. watch it how fast this just shrivels up yeah it goes look at to, that it goes yeah it goes to nothing pretty quick it sure does and uh you'll go ahead and just pack this on in your stock pot and then i'll use a wooden spoon and just push it down and let those cook down for a, a minute or two and then add the rest but if you see that you are not submerging everything in the liquid, then you know you need to add a little more. And that's just according to the amount of greens you have. There is no, I can't physically measure these and tell you. That's a mess. Hand me a wooden spoon, please. And that's... I'm gonna just push these down in this liquid and because it's boiling, it is just taking the, size of it away it's a whole lot of good liquid in the greens themselves look at that i mean would you have thought that that entire pan <laughs> would have filled up this pot now i'm not going to leave them on this high of a temperature while they're cooking they'll they'll reduce down and just simmer and you can check for the tenderness that you like. So now that all the greens are in and the pot is full, I'm gonna turn the heat down. To like a simmer? To a, kind of a high simmer for now. Got you. Until I can get it to where I can put the lid on it. Okay, so now it's just a little low simmer. I'm gonna cover the pot of greens and let those cook down for a little bit and I'll periodically come in and check them and just make sure that the temperature is correct and maybe taste a few. Now I do have a lot of people ask, what do collard greens and turnip greens taste like? And honestly, I can't compare them to anything. I just can't think of anything that, that tastes like them. Um, they're really good though. I would, I would like for you guys to give them a try if you've never never had them before now 
Would you like yours in a bowl? I think I want mine in a bowl. Okay. Yeah, I just so happen to have one right here. Handy. Look at here. Top that off with that cornbread right there. Look at that. Mmm, mmm, that's what I'm talking about right there. Mmm. And we're having some, some black eyed peas. peas. Yes. Mm. Hope you all enjoyed being in the garden and cooking with us today. Mm. And I hope you try some collard greens or turnip greens. Y'all be good. Mm -hmm.